so far in this course, we've had smooth sailing, not a single issue, not a single error. And that is by design, but that stops here. In this lesson, we're going to cover what happens when something goes wrong in your flow and how to go about and move data in different ways, depending on what happens in your flow. So first up, what happens if I input an email address in or attendee list that doesn't quite make sense. Let's just put some random information here. Let's go ahead and run our flow. So it's going to go ahead and loop over and try to draft an email for each person. Now, obviously when it hits the fifth person, that email, it's going to go ahead and throw an error. It wasn't able to successfully draft that email. Now in gum loop, if there's an error in your flow, the flow stops, but it's important to notice that Gumloop runs loops in parallel. So this flow was successful for first four attendees and then had an error at the fifth one. Now, in our case, it's not a huge problem, but imagine we were running this for 500, 1,000 or 1,500 attendees, or you have a large flow. Ideally, what we would want is to continue running the flow, even though there was one of the attendees, one of the items in our loops that was unsuccessful. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and add an error shield. So I'm going to go back to my library. I'm going to search for error. I'm going to bring in an error shield. And we're going to say, let's put this subflow into the error shield. This is saying if this node or this subflow fails, there was an error, continue running the flow. Don't worry about that error. And this is particularly, particularly useful if you are running flows that have many, many items. So let's run that again. And our expectation here is that it runs smoothly for four and then has an error on the fifth, but still considers the flow successful. And if we go into our drafts, we do still have those four drafts. So that was how to manage errors in Gumloop. You can use an error shield to continue running your flow, even if there's an issue. Errors are not the only reason you may want to move data in different ways in your flow. You may want to create a condition that says, Hey, if this happens, go ahead and take this branch. And if this happens, go ahead and take that branch. An example here might be, does it really make sense to enrich a attendee? If they're providing a personal email that may cause issues, we may not be able to find it. So let's create a flow where if the user has a personal email, personal business, a uh, personal Gmail or something like that. Let's just send a generic email. And otherwise, if they're using a business email, let's give the route we created in the previous lesson. So now we need two things. One, we need to check whether it's personal or business, and then we create a condition if else, if it's personal, you do this, if it's business, do this other route. So first let's categorize the email using the AI categorizer node. So I'm going to pass in the email. That's our input. That's going to be the content we need to categorize like that. And then two categories as options, personal or business. So the AI categorizer node takes content and then selects the category that most makes sense. And to give it a little more context, we're going to say categorize the email domain as personal or business like that. So if I go ahead and run this just to see what the output of that categorizer node is, let's go ahead and categorize it. And we see just like that, we had an error. So Ideally, we avoid that route. It selected personal. It wasn't able to complete it. That's great. So now we want to say if the output of this categorizer node is personal, we're going to use an if else. So similar to the error shield, it looks at the output of a specific node. So in our case, that's the categorizer node. What is our condition for the if? We're going to say if selected category contains personal. That's where we wanted to run if otherwise we wanted to run else. So what do we want in the if branch? We want to send a Gmail sender node, right? The same thing we have on the other node, but we just want a more generic email. So I'm going to pass the if branch. Let's go ahead and pass through inputs. That's saying, take the values, let's pass those through. And then content to categorize. Remember that is the email. We can use that as recipient. Now body, I'm going to go ahead and copy what we have here, but we're going to make it a little more generic like that. 
and then subject is going to be three talks we recommend. Now let's go to our body. I'm going to say hi there because I don't have their first name. That comes from the enrichment. We're going to say uh, uh, here are three talks we expect to be very popular. And I'm just going to copy a few examples from our Google Sheet like that. Let's make this bulleted. And just like that, we have our first route. Now, before I run this, let's kind of configure the other route as well. Right? What happens if we're in the else if we have the business? Well, in that case, we simply want to run the route like this. Or we want to run this flow right here, this section of the flow. And now remember to update the email address, which is now coming from the else. That is the content to categorize like that. And otherwise, our flow runs exactly the same. Let me just reorganize things here and make it nice. So what's going on here? We have an input. It checks whether the email is personal or business. If it is personal, it's going to go ahead and run this Gmail sender node. And if it is business, it's going to go ahead and run our flow just like before. So currently, I have it as Aaron at gmail.com as the input. So let's go ahead and run this flow. And our expectation is that it does not run this part of the flow. It only runs this one. And we can see that it's taking the email. It's categorized it as personal. If else, it put it into the leftmost branch right here. And if we go and see the email, we have our generic email. And if we were to run this for a business email, it would run the flow just like before. So those are two ways of managing flow, managing different things in your flow. On the one side, if you are expecting an error and want your flow to keep running, you can use an error shield. And if you want to create conditions, different routes for your flow to take based on the output of a node, you can use the if else node. And with that, we complete Gumloop 101. You can now go ahead and build workflow automations on your end. And I'll see you back for Gumloop 201.